Hello, friends, and welcome to episode four of Missed Conceptions. I'm your host, David White. Now, before we get started today, let me clear up some confusion that I have probably caused. In the past couple of episodes, I've asked for iTunes reviews, believing that they helped people find us, that they increased our visibility and our searchability. Well, I found out this week that that is not the case. iTunes reviews do not help our visibility or searchability, and it doesn't secure us a place on any top charts. However, what they do is that they serve as a way of social proof so that when people look at our podcast, they can look at customer reviews, or listener reviews in this case, and say, hey, a lot of people like this show. I might like it too iTunes reviews are also pretty nice because it gives you the opportunity to tell me what you like and what you don't like about the show. In a similar vein, I appreciate Facebook comments, like the one I received this week from, I don't know, I'm going to be real honest with you, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce your name, Ido, Ido, spelled I-D-O, and the last name is Tizang, maybe it's like a bullet ricocheting off of Wonder Woman's bracelet. That's probably not how you pronounce it. Anyways, Ito left me a very nice comment about episode three. I really appreciate it, Ito. So uh, don't think that I didn't. Those kisses. I don't. Whatever. And you know, I talk about iTunes a lot, but I don't give enough love to our SoundCloud listeners. So let me give a shout out to our followers on the Misconceptions Podcast SoundCloud. First up, we have C. Wilson Troll. Is it Troll or Trull, T-R-U-L-L. Next, we have Noam Karpus. I, I bet I'm getting Noam right, but what about the last name, Karpus? Karpas? Karpas? I don't know. Let me know. Next is Aaron Aviram, and yo, cue the air horns. Aaron was involved with making City of the Mist, and now he's listening to me do a podcast about the game that he helped make. That's awesome. And it would probably be more awesome if I knew how to pronounce your name. <laughs> Is it Aaron? Is it Ron? I don't know. Don't hate me, please. And then we have Molly underscore NE78. And Molly, I don't know which one of you in that picture it is because there's two of you. But I'll go ahead and say that you're both awesome. So there you go. Finger guns. Lamb Bridget. Hey, Lamb Bridget. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having an easy username, man. I appreciate that. And then last we have user, oh man, 86728416. User, you're awesome, but that name is not. You need to change that name, man. Get a cool name to represent how cool you are. Because I'm an English teacher, and when I look at numbers, like they all get all jumbled up in my head, and eh, it's not good. If you want to be featured in a shout out in the episode, you can follow us on the Misconception SoundCloud or leave us a rating and reviewing on iTunes and I'll give you a nice little shout out. Maybe some finger guns, maybe some kissy noises. No? Okay, maybe not that. Anyways, let's get to the adventure. You come up on this warehouse on the uh, river. It's on the south side of the river, closest to Morty's. From the outside looking in, it looks to be a vacant warehouse. So would we all like to split up and just do a quick glance through the warehouse, see if we notice anything. As you're exploring, you see that all of these boxes are tied or have the logo for a business called Legendary Solutions. This is really strange. There's no one here. There's no security cameras. Why are all these boxes sitting here? There's de- Actually, did there we verify that cameras. there aren't security <laughs> cameras? Because I'm pretty sure they are we watching didn't check right that. Now. And towards the opening of the warehouse where y'all entered in, uh, Three cops have entered, and they have flashlights and are looking around. Uh, One of the flashlights come over and lands on Esther. Hey, I think I got someone over here, guys! So, you all escape into the uh, surrounding neighborhoods, things like that. Um, Now you all can go check out the second warehouse, if you wish. Uh, You look in. Uh, This warehouse is similar to the Legendary Solutions Warehouse. In fact, it might even be a Legendary Solutions Warehouse. But there is an area kind of towards the middle of the warehouse that has been cleared out. Uh, And there's been a lamp, well, floodlights installed on around the perimeter of this area to kind of illuminate it. In the middle of the area, you see a chemistry lab almost. There is a very large table, which is actually just like boxes kind of pushed together. 
and there is a lot of chemistry equipment on it, and you see a man in a lab coat working with all of these different chemicals. And you recognize him as the man that you are looking for, uh, Marcus Malcolm. Well, did he look strong? No, he was. He's kind of a. He's kind of a wren. Uh, he's very flimsy looking, and <laughs> he looks kind of like a trout. Uh, uh, Sounds like I could take him. I That's my thought too, and we could handle the dogs. I mean, you could with your weird thing, you could create some sort of net or whatever. Yeah, I could just stab him. Oh no, oh, no, no, not the dog. From somewhere in the darkness, you hear a voice. Did they send you to get me? This is the way to use this drug, not for some some holy war, some stupid fight, but for money. So the minute I see him, I send them straight to him to bind wrists, feet. And he hears you, and as he turns around, it's too late as your vines wrap around his, you said his wrists and his ankles? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, and he just is completely entangled in these vines and falls down and says, No, 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 they're coming for me, they're going to find me! I'm dropping the people's elbow on the other dog, because he's right under me. Do it. I'm just going to go... That's two elbow slaps. So yeah, you come down on the crown of this dog's head. It it turned to look at Faye. And then you come down on the crown of its head. And it goes... <laughs> and you just knocked it out. Okay. So you, you <coughs> jump over the boxes. And you see the dog kind of... <laughs> on the other side of the boxes. His, his head is turned away from you. Uh, his back is facing you. And uh, you... You walk up and you're saying encouraging, kind words to this dog. Hey, little buddy. We're not here to hurt you. Granted, he shot you. But (laughs) you're okay. Okay. And as you reach out to pet him, he whirls around with his massive jaws and just clamps down on you. Run over really Uh quick. And then I uh, decide to swoop in and help by turning my ectoplasm construct into a lasso. She designs a cage with a new set of vines. And between Bill's lasso and your vines, you have successfully put this dog and wrapped him up and he is restrained. He is struggling against the restraints, but he is sufficiently restrained. What were you talking about when you said uh, holy war? What's that? They have plans for this city. Who are they? The ones who sent you. Your mother? Sick burn, bro. He he looks at you almost for the first time. And his eyes kind of widen. And he says, If if they didn't send you, then who did? Uh, you hear the air split with a rifle fire. Uh, and then the doctor's head snaps back. Another Another shot breaks through the glass and strikes the chemistry set. And it starts to go up in flame. So I'm going to send one of those that was already there um, over to the chemistry set and grab one of the pill bottles that was at the end of the table. Uh, You look at the bottle that you grabbed, Faye. Uh, It has a symbol on it. Esther, you take a glance at this bottle and you immediately recognize it. This is a symbol that showed up in your father's writings in his journal. Faye, why did you grab that bottle? I thought it would be important. It hadn't been touched by the fire yet. I think I can help you if you'll come back to my bar tomorrow. Okay, deal. I will bring the bottle. I swear to you. The city, a mashed up combo of the old world and the new, of the mundane and the mystical. By day, this city is everything it seems a city with tower and skyscrapers, potholes that never seem to stay fixed, and stiffs and ties and dames and high heels. But at night, the real nature of the city comes out. At night, the shifty-eyed stalker becomes a creature with dripping claws and a maw full of teeth. At night, 
cars roll down the streets with no one in the driver's seat. But when morning comes, nobody can remember how the night really went. They remember through a fog, or more appropriately, a mist. No one knows where the mist came from, or its true nature. In fact, most everyone in the city doesn't even know the mist exists. The mist doesn't just cover up either, it affects everything and everyone in the city. Changing up, warping up. Most of those affected by the mist, they take what the mist gives them to turn a profit or pursue selfish gains. But there are some, just a few, that fight the good fight. They put their necks on a line to protect the city from the nefarious ne'er-do-wells. It's not always easy. In fact, it never is. But these legends don't surrender. This is a story of a few of those legends. Their story needs to be told, and it needs to be heard. Alright, I feel like in the past few episodes we've gotten to know the characters pretty well, their motivations. Uh, There's still a little bit that we can discover as we keep going through the story, but I feel that we have not fully learned the voices and the, the majestic peoples behind these voices. So let's go around the table and um, let's start with Jaime. Jaime, how long have we been friends? Too when did we, long. When did we first meet? Was it, were we nine or ten? I think it was, I was nine, you were ten. Because you were like six months older than me. Yeah, I'm a little and bit older than And it was in the summer. You. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, but Jaime, what was, what was your first impression of me? <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure what happened was I befriended Logan and quickly found out that that was like, a terrible Wasab- mistake. Was- yes. Wasabi, Logan? Yes. Wasabi. Wasabi. And I was just That's like, so I was like, oh, this kid's the worst. And then I remember arguing with him about the fact that ice <laughs> does indeed, or water does indeed expand when it freezes and turns into ice. <laughs> and he was arguing that it didn't. And I was like, I just learned this in science class. You're an idiot. And then I think I went to the swings and you were swinging. And you, I love and the we, swings. we hung out. Yeah. And I was like, God, at least this kid knows that water does indeed expand when it turns into ice. So I was like, he's all right. This poor wasabi kid. He's oh, he's the worst. He, I hope yeah. he's Logan. I hope you're listening to <laughs> no, this right no, now. No, 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 no. You no, are no. a moron. <laughs> no, and I hope that, please. I hope that you drop out of school. Wow! Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh, I mean. And because you never understood that water expands. <laughs> No, not because really. Of this I, one simple concept. <laughs> not really. I, he, he's all right. I, I like. I, I like you, Logan. You're chill. All no, right. But, well, <laughs> wait, wait. Hold. Are well, you not done? What was your first impression of us? You can't just leave us. Oh, okay. So back backwards. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what was my first impression of you? I think um, you saw me swinging, and then the next second, <laughs> you didn't. See I thought. Me I thought you cared way too much about ice and water. <laughs> <laughs> wait, did we first meet before camp? Like between no. the sessions? I remember you and Ivan were like buddy buddy. But Ivan was like killer on the basketball court. Um, so I was like, Ivan and Jaime are like the best basketball players here. That's still true. I must become one of them. And then next year, Ivan didn't come back to camp and you did. And I was like, well, I guess it's the David and Jaime show. And it's been the David and Jaime show for the past 18 years, whatever. Do fast math. I'm 26. We met when we were nine or 10. 17. 17. Okay. Let the record state that the the camp we're talking about, as soon as me, the Hispanic kid, and Ivan, the black kid, showed up, they immediately assigned us to shovel cow poop. <laughs> no, to be no fair, I they, c- that they, is completely true. They make everybody shovel cow poop. Yeah, but they sit both of, like, hey, you two, go shovel cow poop. I'm just like, what the heck? That's because you came with the director and his wife. I'm just saying. Zach, let's move on to you. How long have we known each other? Uh, we met... Oh, four, Our freshman years? year of college. Uh, how long was that? Uh, that four or five years ago. Four years ago. Four, yeah. Well, four Very years ago. Early. So, Zach, what was, uh, what was your first impression of me? I guess the only thing I can think of, um, of earliest memories of church, uh, <laughs> at Jesus Church, at Jesus. Um, was you going right down the middle at like a potluck 
and grabbing literally everything on your plate and like double stacking it. Yes. And I was like, who is this? Is that I missed that. Yeah, there were there were two tables and the imbeciles went on the outside of the tables and like could only get what was on that specific table. I went through the middle of the table. So in between both not tables. Just like the middle of like, oh, I'll just like grab everything. It was like layers of food. Yeah, well, I like food. It's good. And good. then you food had is like good for you. Enjoy it. the cherry on the top with your bowl, a styrofoam bowl of like 50 different desserts that are also like mm-hmm. stacked on each other. Mm-hmm. Yes, dessert yeah. is also wonderful. Yeah. I so like, I, I went I down the middle and I like piled all of this food onto my plate because I could get it from both sides or both tables and it was amazing. So I was like, that's a good idea. Yeah. I'll follow the I'll follow the college minister in this one. Yeah. yeah. I was a college minister at that time. Uh my first impression of you. I don't know, oh yeah, you're like I'm a psychology major and I was like, I have to watch everything I say around this kid. <laughs> <laughs> he is gonna dis- so dissect accurate. me. <laughs> uh and Tessa, what uh I, I've known you, I guess, for as long as I've known Zach. Yeah. Minus one year because you were gone for a year. I still no, saw I, you. I forgot about you for that year. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. And then you came Thanks. back. I was like, wow, this is so nice meeting you for the first time <laughs> ever. so awful. If I don't see you for a year, I'll reset. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Anyways, uh, your first impression of me. Um. Okay, well, it was when we first came to class. So you were teaching class. Mm-hmm. Um. And so I just didn't know what to do with you. Um, <laughs> because, of course, like, one of the first things you did was do the, like, questions of, like, I love you, like, superhero oh, questions. Oh, yeah, the really, and yeah, stuff. my favorite, the name game. Right, right, yeah, right. I love right. that. So we did that, and I was like, this is cool. This, I think I like this. Um, but then you also were <laughs> started off your lesson by saying, all right, guys, well, I looked at this a few minutes ago, so we're just going to go ahead and jump into this. <laughs> I was always like, wait, so like, do we know what we're talking about? But then it was always really good, so I was like, eh, well, he does know what he's talking about, so it works. That's how, that's how I start every class now that I'm a full-time teacher as well. <laughs> say, well, fifth and sixth grade students, uh, I just looked over all these grammar rules, um, Literally looking at them for the first time right now. Uh, let's let's start. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. So no, no, I just didn't know what to do with you, but I, you were cool. You seemed yeah. cool. Now we're tight. Yep. Yeah, we play games together now. Yep. Yeah. When I first met you, you're from Dallas, so I was like, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's not do that. No. No. <laughs> I, I liked I appreciate your comments in class. You were always very thoughtful. Oh, thank you. Appreciate you, that. You put a uh, a new spin on things I hadn't thought of. And last, certainly not the least, Carrie. So we're talking like first first impressions, <laughs> yeah, or yeah. like the second time around when we met. Well, if you want to go by me, you had not seen me for more than a year, so you could have reset. Okay. Well, I remember uh, I remember camp. With Jaime and David. Um, yeah, you do. High five. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I remember David was super quiet and kind oh, yeah. of weird. Oh, yeah. Mainly because he was quiet and so I didn't know anything about him. He's still um, <laughs> Fair. Uh, and I remember when they were going to wake you up for your friend's baptism and you were oh, like, yeah. but it's in the flipping middle of the <laughs> night. And I thought that was pretty funny. Um, I was not, I was not conscious when I said that. <laughs> they were like, "Yo, we gotta go, man! It's right now." And I was like, it's the "Flipping middle of the night," <laughs> and I woke up feeling like ashamed of that. I was like, "Oh my gosh, I said flipping at Bible camp." <laughs> um, and then I remember the second time around meeting you. Um, many many years later, I saw your name on the list for our group for Welcome Week, and I thought I'm gonna have to take care of that kid. Yeah. Because we went to the same college, and you were a year older than me, and you were a peer group leader. And uh, you totally robbed the cradle. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's accurate. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, first on. impression of you, uh, you were really loud, and like you were into the whole, like, let's like all be together and go to the tabernacle and sing and blah. And I was not about that life. I was like, I just want to be on the basketball court and... Not around a lot of people. So yeah, that's my first impression of you. 
So basically, he hated you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Casually. That's, okay. That's why I said that this question wasn't going to be a good idea because uh-huh. I knew how it was going to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. All right. Tessa's first impression of me, she hated me. So. Yeah, that's not good. Well, now that we've uh, we've learned each other intimately, and, now we're and... Married. yeah, Stop now. Stop saying that. Well, we are married, so there you go. Are you married? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, Zach and I are married. <laughs> we went to go pick up the couch together. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. There, there is someone out there that thinks Zach and I are a gay couple, and uh, I'm okay with that. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start the adventure now that we know each other uh, intimately and all that. Um, so I'll say it's it's the next day after last night's events. Uh, you had you have taken down Malcolm, uh, but a mysterious shooter from a grassy knoll or otherwise uh, took out. Uh, Malcolm, before he could tell you anything, he was acting really weird. Um, you did manage to get one sample of the drug he was creating, and you agreed to meet up the next night to kind of talk about it, but since it was the middle of the night uh, in the middle of the week, you decided to go your separate ways until uh, the next night. So it is now the next day, and I'm going to start with Bill. Bill, you are arriving to work, and... Uh, as with most days, after you have had an assignment, the intercom goes boop boop. Uh, Bill, could I see you in my office, please? I start walking towards his office. Okay. I just like I'm like in the middle of a hand at a table. I literally just like throw the cards down and like start walking towards his office, very unhappily. Okay. He is waiting for you in the ornate office. Um, he has his pile of cash, his pile of tokens. He looks up from you and says. Bill, just the man I wanted to see this morning. So tell me, how did your assignment go last night? Well, he's he's dead. Good, good. Let me see the chip, boy. I ain't your boy, uh, first of all. Second of all, I, I didn't have time to get the chip. What are you, uh... What do you mean, Bill? Well, I was working my magic. Uh, being the best damn soul collector you could ever hope for and he got shot in the head who shot him uh some snipe i have no idea bullet came through the window damn it bill he slams his fist down on the the table and he like sweeps his arms out and just scatters everything off the table you have never seen him like this he's usually a very cool very collected person and he stands up and he's breathing heavy for a few seconds I've got my hands ready to go with my tattoos kind of yeah. flaring up. Okay. He he slows his breathing down, and he reaches into his suit pocket, and he he pulls out a toothpick, and he puts it in his mouth, and he starts chewing it, and he kind of relaxes a little bit more, slows his breathing down. He says, Bill, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm disappointed. But around here, I believe in second chances. He walks around the the desk and he comes to stand in front of you. Just like you have a second chance. He puts his finger on your chest right next to your poker chips. Just like you have a second chance to be a better man and a better father. I do not tolerate failure, Bill. You will have one more chance. Tonight, after your shift, you will get your dossier. And you get to bring me the soul of the poor bastard that picture is in that dossier. Do you understand me, Bill? He pokes your chest with every enunciated syllable. And he, he's, he's a lanky dude. He's quite taller than you, so he's standing over you. What do you say, boss? Good boy. And he, he, with his tongue, he rotates the, the toothpick from one corner of his mouth to the next. He says, now get out. Oh, and as, as you're walking out, he says, Oh, and Bill, you turn around, he has a big smile on his face. Remember, customers love to see you smile, Bill. All right, let's cut to uh, Ren. Next day at work, uh, I believe last time we saw you, you were hiring new workers to work at your uh, fledgling company. Um, So it is a new day. Uh, Pablo shows up on time, just like usual, and your new hires show up. Well, actually... Deja shows up, but uh, Andy, the other person you sh- you hired, does not. Um, so Pablo is uh, sitting in 
sitting in his cubicle, his very small cubicle, that unbeknownst to him, a uh, drug dealer was gagged and tied up in just <laughs> just hours before. And uh, Deja is... Um, de- describe what Deja looks like. She's she's standing in the middle of your, your lobby. Uh, so Deja is tall and s- kind of similar to like the... I guess culture of just like hacktivism. Okay. She is kind of, kind of like slunk over, just like all of us, or like Pablo does, and I kind of slunk over. And she's just wearing like a nondescript jacket that just has, um, like one of her favorite games on it or something, uh, PC games. And then is just wearing jeans and kind of just like walks in and looks at Pablo. Or really just glances at Pablo, realizes yeah. that he's just a whatever worker, and walks to my office. She uh, timidly knocks on the the office door. Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Pascal. Yes, can I help you? Um, yes, I'm I'm the new hire, uh, Deja De La Croix. Yes, I guess please come in, and I like grab one of these like metal, very uncomfortable foldable chairs, and like set it down. I was, I was like, I've got a water there for you if you want one, I guess. Oh, uh, thank, thank you. She takes it, takes a sip. I, I brought, I brought my resume. She holds out a little Manila folder, gives it to you, puts it on your desk. Uh, very organized, very neat, all typed out, good references, all that stuff. Yeah, I like sit there silently for like a minute or two, flip through it, look at it, and I was like, so tell me a little bit about yourself, other than obviously what your resume <coughs> says. I I I feel most comfortable around computers. Um, uh, I'm 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 very I'm very excited to be working for you. Uh, I I remember I actually applied uh, a, a few months ago, um, but I I believe there was some there was some sort of mess with the company and uh, the split and everything. But 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 anyways, I'm I'm very happy to be working uh, here now. I mean I mean if you hire me, of course. Uh, I'm not I'm not working here yet, but. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh, oh, okay. And I grab, I, like, open my desk, and I, like, grab one of my laptops out, and grab one of the laptops out that's, like, in pieces. And I, like, set a toolkit aside, and I, like, put the laptop there. And I was like, here's here's what you're going to do for me, Deja. You see this laptop? Yeah. Put it together and make it work. Oh, um... Are all, all the part all the parts right here? Am I gonna need to get anything from the around the office or anything? No, everything's here for you. It's just ready. I'll give you five minutes, and if you can do it, you're hired. If not, well, we'll worry about that later, I guess. Oh, oh, oh okay. Can um um she pulls out some earbuds. Can I listen to music? I I work better when I listen to to music. I guess whatever. Just just do your thing. Okay. The clock has already started. Oh, oh, okay. She puts the earbuds in, fixes them in, pulls out her L phone, selects a song, clicks it, and she starts bombing her head with the music, and then her, her hands start to move in the rhythm with the music. It's almost like she's dancing with the computer parts. Uh, everything clicks into place. There's a rhythm to her work. And uh, she clicks the last button. She pushes the power button, and you hear a ding, ding of the computer starting up. You look down at your watch. Uh, it took her three minutes to fix the computer. Very impressive, Deja. You're hired. What was that? She takes the earbuds <laughs> out of her ears. All she does is work, 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 work. <laughs> yep, that's the song she's listening to. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I said, Deja, very impressive. There's a cubicle over there next to Pablo. It's covered in boxes. Just move those out of the way, and this is your laptop. Use it. Do whatever you need to get the job done. Just ask Pablo for to work orders. It's very basic work. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you so much. She she stands up and the she stands up very excitedly and like the chair flips over behind her. She's like, oh, so, sorry. She like sets it up. She says, thank you, thank you so much. She goes out of the office. She says, oops, sorry, forgot the laptop and grabs the laptop she just fixed and goes back out. And uh, from outside in the lobby, you hear a uh, hi. Uh, my De- um my name is Deja De La Croix. I I guess I'm gonna be sitting in this this uh, cubicle next to you. What? Oh, 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 yeah, you must be the new hire. Um, I'm Pablo. Nice to meet you. Oh, yeah, nice too. 
where am I supposed to sit with all these boxes? <laughs> um, all right, let's cut to uh, Faye. Faye, what are you doing the, the night after your excursion and a very... I don't know how would you under, how would you how would you put how you handled Richard the night before <laughs> your manhandling of Richard maybe <laughs> yeah your complete punking. he was brought to justice oh yeah he was brought to justice mm-hmm. all right so uh, what are you doing today um so today is just a pretty typical day at the school um but I'm going to do the photo montage and focus on um, one of my. Um, thank you, my bobbers. Okay, and uh, what Tessa is talking about is there is a move in City of Mist called the photo montage or downtime action. Like, your character can take different actions, like investigate, uh, face danger, things like that. Uh, but what photo montage is, is it, it is a uh, mechanic way of representing what your character does in the downtime. Uh, and you can, you know, you can improve your investigation skills, you can improve your logos and your mythos, which is basically like your human side and your mystical side. Um, so Tessa, what do you, what do you do with your photo montage? Um, so today during school, Faye focuses on the teacher for change, um, Mm -hmm. part of her character, which is creating the better future for her students. And so throughout the entire day, she has, um, she starts doing one-on-ones with different students, starting with, um, Johnny, who is the young boy who was abused and mm-hmm. um, just starts, you know, like getting to know them better and like building a trusting relationship. And then also all of the lessons throughout the day are in somehow tied to standing up for what you believe in and standing up to a bully. Nice. Um, and so I would imagine she's very impassioned about this. Uh, today. Right. Okay. Right. So it's obviously on her mind. It's obviously something she's worried about that day. And so the kids are like okay, well, I guess we'll focus on this because uh-huh. she's, like, freaking out. So yeah. they kind of just, like, go with it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, since you use your photo montage for that, go ahead and give yourself one attention mark in uh, Teacher for Change. Awesome. Okay. So that is what you're doing throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Esther, what about, uh, what about you? What are you doing? Um, I am <clears throat> kind of working on... I'm... Uh, I am doing a photo montage as well. Um, I am working on Daddy's Girl with mm-hmm. all of this stuff last night. I'm trying to figure out if um, there's anything that is in Dad's little black book. I'm like going back through and just um, searching through it. Um really focusing in on the symbol from the bottle Mm -hmm. um going back because i remembered seeing it but i couldn't remember exactly what it was about so i i was really focusing in on that i didn't really sleep um i've been just working on that uh go ahead and give yourself one tick and daddy's girl uh and so now you have two ticks and once you get one more you get to choose a new power tag Uh, because once you get three uh, it resets and you spin one of those or you spend uh, that attention to grab a new power tag, which is basically like leveling up. Um, so cool. Um, and I will say that as you've been <clears throat> studying your, your dad's journal and everything like that, the sketch, I guess, of that symbol that you found last night was one of the last things that he wrote in his journal. So kind of looking at what he wrote after that, there's not a whole lot. Draw whatever conclusions you want from that. Uh, time passes, everything... <laughs> goes on with your days um bill jeremiah gives you a new uh, dossier at the end of your work day Faye, i guess after the school day is over you show up at morty's to uh talk with esther about the drug and all of that mm-hmm. uh, and if we want to do you all want to meet up at the bar at the same time yeah okay so we will cut ahead uh everybody is meeting up at the bar i guess james James is in the back frying up stuff. There are people out front drinking. Uh, where where are you congregating at? We go sit in a booth. Okay. That's kind of like in the corner, so away from everyone. Okay. In a, okay. You're all together. So we get there. So I guess we get there and y'all go sit down and I'm going to go up to the bar. Um, hey, Esther, we're all here whenever you get a chance. 
I'll be right over. Did you bring the bottle? I did. Yeah. And then I... Mm, sorry. So I turn back. I start to walk off and I turn back and I walk back up and I say, by the way, the situation with the man has been handled. I'll fill you in later, but it's taken care of. I nod to her, um, and then I'm finishing up with the customers that are, like, right there at the bar, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that they've got what they need. Um, James, I'll be back. And I... Where are you going? You don't really get to ask that kind of question, because I'm your boss, so just, I'll be back. Oh, okay then. <laughs> Don't tell me nothing. I'm fine with that. Don't worry about me. I'm just your peon. I never understood why Dad hired him. I and I walk him. off and <laughs> go sit at the bar. Uh, cut to I the mean, table. Go sit at the booth. Yeah. yeah. Cut to the booth where uh, Rin and Bill have been left alone. It's not that hard to wrap your head around. Whenever the water freezes, it expands. I already know that. Uh, do you even know that I have a computer for a brain? So I already know that. Why are you explaining this to me again? I want to pour water into your stupid brain and freeze it. <laughs> At that time. That wouldn't even work. <laughs> Esther and Faye walk up. So pretty much all y'all do is fight. We're pretty much best friends. So uh, <laughs> we just go back to my place and this play time. PC games. How, how did they become best friends? Granted, how did we become friends? Statistically, I don't that's understand not even any possible, of this so. anymore. Yeah. Oh, I don't either. Okay, so, so I pull out the bottle and put it on the table. All right, let's let's talk about this. Why are Esther and Ren y'all so interested in wanting this bottle? It's just everywhere online, there's people taking this kind of drug or whatever, and it just turns in very beast. So they start attacking people. It's really strange. I. I just want to understand what's going on. Why it's, why this is happening. I suggest we just make Bill take it. I mean, he's the largest one of us, and you can just wrap him up with your vines or something, and we'll see what happens. Um, no. No, I'm not down for that. Why would we make anyone take this? We know what happens when someone takes it. You just said you've seen videos. We're doing an ethical experiment. No, this is not an ethical experiment. <laughs> this is the... Direct opposite of an ethical experiment. Bill's okay with it. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Thanks, what? Bill. <laughs> what? No. Okay. As they're arguing, Esther. I've, like, grabbed the bottle, not, like, you know, ripped it off the table, but, like, I grabbed it, and I'm examining it and, like, kind of sniffing the inside of it, just, like, trying to figure out if there's anything that racks any kind of memory for me. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing's coming up. There's a few... I'll say there's... Four uh, white pills inside. Uh, has a very chemical smell, uh, both from the bottle and from the actual pills inside. Uh, but nothing, nothing is jogging your memory. It's not like a an olfactory response where it triggers a, a memory of you seeing this before. Esther, why, why did you freak out when you saw this bottle? Has anybody seen this symbol before? No, you have to. Never somebody's seen it. had to have seen it somewhere. I haven't seen it anywhere. But it's granted, not on the internet anywhere. I'm in a third grade classroom all day long, so, you know. Bill, you haven't said anything. No, I, I haven't seen it. I'm sorry, I've got other things on my mind at the moment. Like Would you what? like to share with the class? Absolutely not. Great. We have a really if trusting If we're going to be working here. together, we have to share things. I just, I'm taking work home, and it's not, it's not good. So I'll try to just... Focus. Okay, fine. And Ren is simultaneously looking up counseling methods of how to like help people. <laughs> and how do you feel about that, Bill? I feel like you should shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me more about that. Explain this feeling of anger. If I say something, will you shut up? No. Okay, that's not saying anything. Um. About this time, uh, the TV is on in the corner next to the bar. Um... James James is out working the bar right now, getting people drinks and stuff. Uh, and he's seen something on the TV that's interested him, so he's turned it up, and so you hear uh, kind of the news report coming through. Um, Previously unknown. The effects of these drugs seem to be violent outbursts and tendencies. The city PD offered no comment on these drugs and how long they have been in the streets. 
we reached out to Police Commissioner Cooper Wheatley, and this is what he had to say. Commissioner Wheatley! Commissioner Wheatley! Do you have anything to say about this new drug that has been hitting the streets? Any comment on what the department's reaction to this has been, or even how long you've known about this? I don't know anything about that drug. Get that camera out of my face. As you can see, Commissioner Wheatley has nothing to say on these allegations. But I can assure you that we here at the Weekly News will keep you updated as more of this story comes to light. I'm Linda Lockwood, reporting live from downtown. Thank you, Linda. In other news, two legendary solutions warehouses were broken into last night. Police responded to the scene and saw multiple masked figures escaping into the night. The police have not reported what, if anything, was stolen. We reached out to Legendary Solutions CEO Drace DeSantos about the break-ins. It, uh, it, it breaks my heart, really. Not because some product was stolen, but because some people thought it had to be. I ask if you are watching the thieves. Please turn yourselves in. Not, I don't care about the stolen goods. But I fund many great employment agencies and counseling centers. We can help you, but only if you seek it. On to other news, where an abandoned animal adoption center downtown will soon be the target of some much-needed renovations. What was the name of the news station? Weekly the Weekly News. news. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. T-W-A. Yeah. And the, uh, the reporter was Linda Lockwood. She's a... Yeah. Uh, Pretty, she's like the, uh, she's the heartthrob. She's the, the girl heartthrob, uh, reporter. Mm. We need those police reports. I can just hack into the police mainframe anyway, so. You can't just hack into the police. With a shot. You'd have to be at the city PD to, uh, get in, get access to their mainframe. Would Esther have any kind of contacts to be able to get into the police records or anything like that maybe maybe uh people policemen would okay this is you can edit this out but police officers i feel like probably frequent bars like not every police officer (laughs) but there's going to be a few that are like regular well and there's some that have to be around like for security purposes too so i probably have contacts sure i would say i would say that you have you have some members here Uh, they could have been friends with morty i don't have i know a guy i was like that. We could we could go to the station and distract people while Zach like gets into the mm-hmm. gets into the room and gets the info we need. Yeah, that's a good idea. And I can just like chat up the guy that I know and be like, "Hey, like, what do you know about this kind of thing?" You know what I mean? All right, so are y'all going to the PD? Yeah. So. Okay. Is there a way? Like, how are we tracking, Pedro? Do y'all just have... I just, I just have a tracker, and it's just on my phone. Oh, okay. I have... He's just find my friend out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have an app where I'm, like, geo-tracking, like, everyone, including y'all, and, like, it's just... And, and just, like, a social media, I'm, like, flipping through. I'm like, oh, look, Pedro's at... No, it's not a sketchy warehouse. And I'm like, oh, and I mean, her bill is at uh, the casino, of course. I'm like, okay, and then... Just, like, being super weird, and, like, to me, this is just, like, normal culture, which I guess will eventually come up later. Yeah. Um, so, do you have anything to, like, alert you if he goes somewhere that would be of interest to us? If I wanted to, if he goes to, back to the warehouse that we were at or something. Because I've got those places marked as, like, places of interest that we've already been, like your bar and stuff. Okay. Maybe we'll just follow him later. Let's go down this rabbit trail first. Hopping into the SUV. Okay, you hop into the black SUV, drive down to the PD. Um, it It's not quite evening yet. Uh, it's maybe late afternoon. There is a, uh, a lot of reporters and just interested people on the steps of the PD. Um, and you, as you get out of the van, you see... Or SUV. Uh, van is too creeper. You have to get out of yeah. SUV. That seems more <laughs> official. Um, but as you get out, there is a man... Uh, at the top of the stairs, kind of addressing everybody, is not Commissioner Cooper Wheatley. You recognize this man as D.A. Pip Hamill. Uh, he is a district attorney. Uh, he has been very tough on organized crime. And, in fact, he is now running for uh, ma- the office of mayor. It hasn't been proven, but the current mayor of the city has ties to the mafia. 
it it is all hearsay. No one's been able to pin it to him. Um, but yeah, he he's just a bad dude. And like Pip Hamill is running on this platform of you know getting corruption out of the city, uh, getting the mayor out of the seat, and cleaning up the street, taking back the streets. Um, and so he is addressing this this crowd of people as you walk up to the PD. Do y'all stop and listen to the crowd, or what do y'all do? I just continue like walking forward. Okay. I'm definitely like listening as I'm going by. Okay. You you work your way through the crowd and up the steps. Uh, as he's talking, he uh, he's a very very handsome man. Has his hair slicked back. Um, very nice suit. Very crisp. He's just people people listen. I know that Commissioner Cooper Wheatley and I have had our differences in the past, but I am convinced that he is a good man and that he will do what is right for this city, especially after I talk to him. I have a promise to you that I will take care of you, and as I am going to run for mayor, I promise to look out for each and every one of you. And this problem, this drug problem in the streets, will not be tolerated, and we will get to the bottom of this. And they're like, oh, pip, 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 blah, blah, blah. Pip, 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 pip. And as you're walking up, uh, who, Rin, mm-hmm. you said you're going up first. Uh, a man kind of rounds a corner and you bump into him. He has kind of a pudgy face. His hair's kind of kind of messed up. It's like he tried to fix it, but he's been working hard all day. He has a very nice suit, too. He's carrying a suitcase and like a bunch of uh, folders and everything. You bump into him and he just drops everything. He says, oh, oh, no, sorry, 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 I'm so sorry. He starts so scooping like up all these folders. I rush to, like, help him out, and while I'm doing that, even with my cybernetic lenses, I'm, like, recording everything. So okay. I can see if there's, like, police reports or, like, any, anything interesting about the papers that are dropped. Okay. Um, all right, interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll bring that up later. Uh, so you record it now, and you can play it back later if you want. Yeah. Um, he says, sorry, sorry, uh, um, thank you, thank you. And he takes everything. And he he kind of nods to you, and he walks down to a uh, to DA Hamill, and a uh, Hamill turns around and he says, Ah, Deacon, there you are, my good boy. Uh, is everything you got? Everything? Uh, yes, yes, I, I have everything, Mister Hamill. Oh, good. Let's go. Uh, as you were, everyone. And he he walks down and gets into his his own SUV with uh, the man he addressed as Deacon, and they drive away. Uh, you go into the PD. Everything is kind of kind of hectic. Uh, cops are running around. There there are some reporters in here asking questions. Um, you see a few a few delinquents are in handcuffs next to, uh, well, on benches and everything. Uh, you walk up to the clerk's desk. Uh, he looks up and says, "Yeah, can I help you?" I was coming in to see Javi if he's available. Detective Martinez. Yes. Roll a convince. Convince. Socialite. I mean, I guess that's really all I got. Are these status cards gone now? Oh, yeah. I'll say that since like a day passed. Um, if you're... So if anybody had a shaken status, it's gone because like you slept it off. But if you have an injured status, like you were bitten, step Never. it down by one status. Never. So I'm just using... Socialite. Yeah. Ten. Nice. Uh, yeah, ma'am, he's uh he's in the back, but he he's pretty busy. I don't, I don't know if he has time for you, but uh, y- you can go back and check on him. Uh, you the rest of your friends with you too? Yep. All right, I don't see any problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you walk oh back in the gosh, back. It is even it's even busier back here. Um, as you're walking by, you see a. Uh, a board with different people's pictures on it. Uh, looks to be like a missing board, and people are walking up, or officers are walking up and kind of adding to the pile of pictures as on this board. Uh, Carrie, or Esther, I guess. Esther walks around the corner, and she sees uh, Detective Martinez at his desk. Uh, he's kind of rubbing his temples uh, and sipping a cup of, or a mug of coffee as he's looking over a, a file. <coughs> Hey, uh, Detective Martinez, got a minute? He, uh, he looks up, kind of frustrated, like he's going to say something, and then he sees you, and he says, Well, bless my guts. If it ain't <laughs> Esther Black. Well, bless my guts. <laughs> I will bless your guts. <laughs> you do it. 
Uh, he stands up. He uh, he gives you a, a very big hug. Very big hug. I'll buy a big hug. hug. I have you a very yeah. big back. He gives you a very big hug. There's a, what can I do for you, Esther? What do you need? What's what's going on? Hey, I was just coming to see, um, you know, I saw on the news about all the, the drugs and stuff. And, yeah, um, yeah. I just didn't know if there was anything that I might be able to do to help out. I mean, I, you know, being at the bar, I meet a lot of people and stuff, you know. Yeah. Hey, hey, I appreciate your help. Uh, hey, have y'all, have you gotten in any trouble down at Morty's? Any trouble with any, any of these hooligans? What do you mean trouble? Have you been, have any of these people shown up and tried to hurt you or any people at your business? Uh, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that they were coming in trying to hurt me. Um, I, I may have But had you a, have seen one of these people? I, I may have seen one of these people. He, he pulls out people. a, he pulls out right. a, a note. <laughs> <laughs> he kills you right there. No. With kindness, cut, cut. He, uh, he pulls out a little steno notepad and, uh, who was it? Do you remember his name? What did he look like? When did he come in? It was yesterday. Uh-huh. Um, he looks rough. <laughs> he came in with a gun. That was frightening. Oh, and were the rest of you all there to see this? I was, yes. Mm, okay. Uh, I got it. I gotta go to the bathroom. Is that real life? Or? Well, it's, it's in-game and real life. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Fair. Sorry. I was like, I don't Bill, know. Bill walks away. Um, oh, uh, okay. See ya. He went by... I think it was... Pedro? Pedro, uh, Pedro, 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 Pedro. He goes back to his desk, starts flipping through notes. Pedro Sanchez. Sure, maybe. Yeah, that could have been the shows you. He shows you a picture. It's Pedro. Yes, yes, that's him. Uh, what, what did he do? Do uh, you know where he is now? No, nope. uh, we have no we, idea. We don't have a, we don't have a direct location. Um, we couldn't get much out of him. Uh, sounded like maybe he was just a pawn in the in the game. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I will say that Sanchez is pretty. Uh, he's not high up on our list. He's a uh, he's small time. Uh, but yeah, thank, thanks for telling me. Now we uh, now we kind of know where he's been. Um. Any, anyways, uh, back to you. Did he hurt you? <laughs> No. Hey, you see, you like still the... got that that mean right hook that your dad taught you? <laughs> of course. Yeah, you do. Let me see it. Let me see. He holds up his his right hand. And I go to when I go to punch him, like I I'm bandaged up because the dog bit my hand. Oh yeah? yeah. And so like I go, like I'm gonna play it off, you know. And so I go to swing, and I it's still. Are a you good... playing up that? Your bandage wrist, or that no, your wrist is bandaged? No, I'm just like punching like normal, but like uh-huh. obviously he notices it. Yeah, he he'll kind of catch your fist and say, "I thought you said it didn't hurt you. What's this?" Uh, that wasn't him. Didn't you burn yourself at the bar yesterday? <laughs> yep. See, this is why you should just what let James do the, the cooking. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You need to let James do the cooking. That's why his. That's why your dad hired him. Oh, now, that's why. That, I'm glad to be reminded of that. Yes, um, in case that was a question that you asked <laughs> earlier, that is why. <laughs> Now I remember. Esther, I told my I told your dad that I would look out for you if anything happened to him. Some did happen to him. I'm looking out for you. I know I haven't been to the pub in a while. I've been busy. All of this. I'm gonna come by soon and check on you. But hey. You take care of that burn, alright? And if you see this Pedro character again, come tell me. We'll pick him up for you. I will. Hey, what do you know about this drug? Um, like how am I? How could I tell? You know, if any of my patrons are using or, you know. Well, you know, you you know how the users look. They're all tweaky, all twitching out, everything they smell funny. Uh, but uh, probably, w- from what I'm hearing of this, uh, they start acting weird. They start a uh, you. Hey, you remember down in Florida with the bath salts? Yeah. Kind of like that. They kind of. Go out of their mind crazy. Start scratching out people's eyes. Uh, very dangerous. Don't, if you see somebody who's acting weird, uh, until we get all this under wraps and put away, uh, be careful. You still got your dad Saturday in the night special? Always. Okay. Keep it close. Can I and, uh, Keep in touch, kid. 
So when they start talking about the drug the second time, like after he asked for a picture the second time, I pull Ren aside. Faye pulls Ren aside. And one of Faye's character things is that she believes that she should fight within the system Mm -hmm. to get justice. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she neglected that last night. Um, But so she pulls Ren aside and um, she's like, Ren, I think I think we should tell them that that we're tracking this guy. I mean, they they could catch him. They could handle it. Why do we need to be the ones tracking him if he's just going to these warehouses? Do you see the police? This place is a madhouse. Of course we have to keep tracking him. We can see where he goes. The police don't have the resources to do this. There's reporters everywhere. They're running amok, trying to figure out what's going on. His location will not help them until we have something actually concrete. But we could help them with this. Why do we need to be the ones to take care of it? The moment that I try to tell them anything that's going on or try to communicate that I'm somehow tracking them, that's illegal. I'll get caught and I'll get a ticket for illegally tracking someone. I feel like we're making a mistake here, but it's your call. It's your device. You know what? When I hack into the mainframe, I'll just upload that. And then if I need to, I'll just turn it on later. Okay. Deal. Okay. Um, while you're having that argument, I'm going to cut to Bill. Bill, you've gone to the bathroom to relieve yourself. Uh, as you're zipping yourself up, uh, you don't even wash your hands. What? Yeah. You zip- oh, my gosh. That's very so graphic. <laughs> what? Zip. Yeah, we see him zip himself up. Oh my God. He doesn't wash his hands. He just goes out the door. Oh. And as you're walking, you hear a, you hear some detectives, um, talking around the corner, uh, saying, "Listen, we've been tracking them, and they're just going up missing. We don't know where they're going." What do you mean you don't know where they're going? We're supposed to be tracking them. Yeah, I know we're supposed to be tracking them, but we don't know where they're going. They just up and disappeared. You kind of step around the corner, and they see you. They say, "You supposed to be back here." Yeah, it's supposed to be wherever I want. You got a problem? Yeah, I think this is a place you don't need to be. You don't worry about where I need to be. And I don't worry about where you need to be or who you lose track of. Yeah? Let me see your license, young man. No. And I just walk off. <laughs> okay. Um, they follow you. Back in the main group, what, what are you doing, Ren? Are you doing anything? I, um... Like open up my laptop. Okay. Just to quietly. to access, you are gonna have to access a computer that is connected to the like the building. So your laptop wouldn't help you. You would have to actually use a even, desktop here. Even if I like unplug the. Yeah. If you if you found internet. some way to. Get the Ethernet cord. Yeah. Plug yeah. your laptop into the system. You could somehow do it. But describe to me how you want to. Okay. Or how so, you are going to. While they're, while Esther is talking to. Him, Detective Martinez, I just, like, pull out my laptop, and I just, like, grab a cord from my pocket and just kind of plug it into my laptop and then plug it into the, plug it into the tower well, on the back side, obviously, because I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm sitting at the front of his desk, and obviously there's, like, lines of desks, so I'm just sitting at the front while Esther's, I guess, to his side, and I just plug it into the tower uh, and just, like, start typing and kind of hacking into their network. Okay. Do a roll of sneaking around. Okay. I'll use the so, high tech laptop. You well use um use some abilities that would help you not be seen. So this this wouldn't be a your technology right now. This would be you trying to unplug this this router in the middle of a police department uh, to do your business. I think I'll do all the new toys, and there's, like, a screen in front of my laptop that simulates, like, just like a PC game or something. So it doesn't even look like I'm doing anything mysterious. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just looks like I'm playing games on my laptop rather mm-hmm. than hacking into their mainframe. Um, okay. I like that. So does it work, like, in tandem with your lenses? Like, mm-hmm. to anybody else looking at it, it's like a game, but your lenses, like, see beneath the code and everything and see what you're actually doing yeah so i mean the the cybernetic lenses can see what's going on sweet okay so even even with like Faye sitting there she's like looks over to me and is you just playing pac-man playing <laughs> <laughs> okay so go ahead and roll a, a sneak around with that plus one okay and then can i use the cybernetic lenses since i'm using those two 
Um, I'll no, because all the new toys is kind of kind of it's, it's the, your lenses are helping you see what's happening, but the, all the new toys is helping people not see what's happening. Okay. Four, so ten. Okay. All right. Uh, you hack into the mainframe. What are what are you looking for? I'm scrolling through and just looking at all the most recent police reports within like the past couple weeks and using like keywords like drug and um, beastly or attacking uh, random. Okay. You with those keywords you find up you pull up a lot of redacted files. Okay. Uh, a lot of those keywords have been omitted or covered over. I, I Any, guess as, as I'm doing this, I'm downloading all the redacted files to my yeah. laptop. As, I mean, as you're looking at the, the files, all you can tell is that they've been redacted. Um, if you want to, I can tell you who they've been redacted by. Okay. Uh, they have been redacted by uh, Commissioner Wheatley. Bill walks up with uh, two pretty angry detectives behind him. Hey, you coming with us. If you don't show us your ID, you got to get out of here. Hey, Detective Martinez, what? <laughs> Why do your friends have such a problem with me? Uh, what's a what? What's the problem, boys? Hey, he won't show us his ID. He's walking around being sneaky and stuff. I just went to the restroom. I'm pretty sure you're just going to the bathroom. <laughs> Is that against the law? <laughs> they they look at uh, Detective Martinez. What uh? What should we do? Martinez looks at you and says. What should they do, Esther? He's with me. All he was doing was going to the bathroom. <laughs> He's helping me with the case, boys. Uh, I'll I'll keep him over here. All right, you uh you do that, Martinez. They kind of they eye you in there. They are definitely checking out your tats. I wink at them. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Naturally. They uh they they scratch the side <laughs> of their cheek with their middle fingers and they they walk away. <laughs> uh, Martinez says uh yeah so uh. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta push you out of here. Uh, but I, I got a lot to do. Um, like I said, let me know if you see this uh, Pedro character again. Uh, I'll come and take care of him for you. All right. All right, and be sure to stop by next time you get a chance. Hey, you don't have to tell me twice. See you, kid. See ya. He gets back to work. Uh, and as you're leaving the office, uh, you're walking by the missing persons board. Uh, more people are being added to it by the second. And, like, time seems to slow down, like, as you, you take steps. And you see a policeman walking up, holding a picture, and he puts it right in the middle. Uh, and as he backs away, you all see the face of... You see the picture of Pedro Sanchez. End of episode. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Missed Conceptions. We'll be back next Monday with a new episode. If you like our show and want to keep up with some behind-the-scenes action of misconceptions, head over to our Facebook and Twitter. You can like us and follow us and keep up to date with what we're doing. We are a new show, and we are trying to grow our subscriber base and our listener base. We appreciate it when you share us, get our name out there, and, uh, you know, just grow our listener base just by sharing us. Please leave us a rating and reviewing on iTunes. Even though it doesn't help people find us, it is still nice to know what you like about the show and what you think we could do better. City of Mist is an RPG created by Son of Oak Productions. If you like this game and want to check it out for yourself, head over to sonofoakproductions.com and download the free starter set today. The music you heard at the beginning of the episode and will hear here in a little bit was composed by Aaron Wharton. And you might have noticed that the theme song was a little jazzed up for this week. Well, you can thank Aaron for that. He contacted me and wanted to jazz it up a little bit, add a little bit to it, and master it. And uh, so there you go. There's a new theme song. Thank you, Aaron. And that's it for this week. And remember, B, C, Y, R, and U are letters, not words. Words.